back to the Hair of the Dog podcast. I'm your host, Nicole Bagley, and here we are today. She's back once again. I feel like, I don't know. Yeah. Like a, you got to new do something new. I know, but I don't have anything new. So anyway, she's back. <laughs> <laughs> the newness is I have nothing new. It's Heather Lawnen. <laughs> I'm jet lagged. I don't know what day it is or what time it is, but our um, productivity, editing, all the things ninja is back. Heather Lawnen. Hi, Heather. Hey, um, actually, I have a new title. May I share it with you? Yes. Okay, it's not official yet, but I am on my way to becoming a certified money coach. <laughs> Is this your 17th certification? Yeah. How many certifications do you have? I don't know. I lost count. I do love a good certification, but the reason all of them actually are out of necessity, meaning yeah. I, there's something I needed. You know, uh, right. when I when I got my Adobe certification, so I'm an Adobe certified expert in Photoshop. And when I got that, it was so I could learn it. And then I teach it. So the money thing, you know, we've talked a lot about money together. Right. And I clearly have issues around money. So I am going through a training so that I can coach myself and then hope, help our, our fellow photographer friends get better with their money stories. I love it. I love it because... Uh, I mean, we talk about money so much on here and really it comes down to those money mindset things that you have in your head. And honestly, I think like success in photography businesses really comes down to that too, because if you have the subconscious belief that you're not worth it or like that, you know, this money is hard and this and that, then I think you just hide and don't even do anything to market your business because I can't tell you how many people, Heather, Heather. Hmm. I'm talking probably eight or nine out of 10 people that I talk to that are like, oh, I need more clients. Where do I get more clients? And I ask them one thing. I'm like, what are you doing right now? Let and me guess. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm posting on social media right. a little bit. Um, and gosh, you know, like it's really, really business is simple. We just need to make some offers to people. And then some people will say yes. And some people will say no. But so many photographers don't even like to make the offers because they have, whether they're conscious or unconscious, all these stories in their head about what that means or what's going to happen or what happens if someone says no and does that make them a failure? And, you know, and again, that can all be at a subconscious level that you don't even realize is going on. So if you find yourself sitting at home right now and wondering, why, why is my fall not booked up? Where are all these clients? And then ask yourself, okay, what am I doing to actually market my business? And if you can't answer at least like three things off the top of your head that I'm doing X, Y, and Z, then we need to do some things. We need to take some actions to get out there, to talk to people, to let them know you're a pet photographer, to ask them, man, I would love to photograph your dog. Here's some information. Like we need to talk to people and let them know what's happening. I actually have a really simple approach to this and it's three steps. It is number one, meet people. Number yep. two, tell them you are a pet photographer. And number three, make them an offer. And that's all you need to do on repeat all the time. And how you meet people, certainly there's online and there's offline and there are marketing strategies, of course. But if you just focused on that, meet people, tell them you're a pet photographer, make an offer, then I think you would be surprised at how many clients you have. It really is that simple. Right, right. And we just need to not be scared of doing that, which I mean, that's a whole nother conversation that we're not really necessarily talking about today, but we're going to have to maybe do another one on like just how to get over ourselves <laughs> well, and talk to people. Yeah. You're going to be hearing a lot more from me around this money conversation as I go through this certification. But I told our Elevate students yesterday, I said, once I get this certification, you better watch out because I'm coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. Well, speaking of money, we are talking a little bit about money today. And the one thing we wanted to talk about is, you know, unless you've been living under a rock, anytime that you turn on the news or scan headlines online or listen to anyone talking about the current state of our economy globally and US based, really everywhere, um, you know, there's talks of recessions, there's talks of inflation, that all of it has not changed. It's been going on all year. It's still going strong and people are scared. And photographers in general, I think, I think two things. Number one, some people literally like start to get the, oh my gosh, what does this mean? And they get kind of anxious about it. 
And then I feel like there's another half that will use that as an excuse of why they don't have any clients and why they're not marketing. And, oh, well, why should I even bother? Because no one has any money anyway. Absolutely. They're telling themselves a story about what it means. And I want to talk about this today because I actually delivered this training recently in our Elevate Live retreat talking about, number one, I want to make a distinction between inflation and a recession because mm-hmm. these are two different things we're talking about. And then number two, how do you inflation proof or recession proof your business? And I believe that I can help our photographer friends with this but they have to believe that they're capable. They can find clients. People are still spending money and that that they're out there because the truth is everything becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Mm -hmm. So if you believe that nobody is spending money and there are no clients, you're not going to get any clients. And then you're going to try to tell me, see, Heather told you so. Uh Uh-uh, no way. No, because you just just created that result with your thinking. So Mm -hmm. let's start by talking specifically about inflation, because that has been going on for the better part of this year. And the definition of inflation is a general increase in prices and the fall in the purchasing value of money. And that is, by the way, inflation is always happening. It's just that we saw a significant rise in inflation starting with the price of gas. So do you remember when that started happening? All the hoopla? Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Everybody, Earlier this spring. Yeah. The price of gas. And and I, I feel like a lot of that chatter has died down, but I was speaking to a group and I said, you guys are so up in arms about the price of gas because oh, it, I get it. It's expensive. Yeah. It costs more to fill up, especially if you have one of those urban assault vehicles and you're putting a hundred dollars in your tank. <laughs> I get it. But this is the question I asked them. Is this really a problem for you or do you just not like it? Mm. In other words, were you able to put gas in your vehicle? If the answer to that question is yes, then this, the price of gas was not a problem for you. You just didn't like it. And there is a difference. Does that make sense? It does. It does. Yeah. So, I mean, you're just basically talking about, you know, because certainly there are people out there that the price of gas, the price of food, the price of all of these things has gone up and they've had to make difficult decisions about like, what do I buy to feed my family? What do I put gas in my car? Like, would do I pay the electric bill? So we're not discounting that because correct that that is a hard position to be in, and there are people out there in that, and it's that's just hard. But there's also a lot of us, like you said, that and part of it is okay. Maybe we don't like it, but I think part of it also then goes to the anxiety part of their brain of like if this is going to keep continuing, and if this keep keeps continuing, then I'm going to get to the point where I can't. I have to start making hard decisions and I can't fill up that tank, even though now it's, (laughs) now it's not just a, you know, me being mad that it's a hundred dollars. Right. Right. There is a distinct difference here. And Mm -hmm. I I agree with you. Thank you for making that point, which is I'm not discounting people who have to make a decision about feeding their family versus putting gas in the car. It's not what I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm talking about those of us who just complain for the sake of complaining when the truth is, it's not really a problem for us. We just don't like it. Mm-hmm. And there's a difference. So if I just don't like something, then I need to shut up about it. <laughs> I mean, let's be real. If if you can afford to do it, and maybe that means you can't go on a vacation and you can't spend on something else, but you're able to do it, then what's the real issue here? We just, okay, right. fair enough. We don't like it. All right. But the truth is that the people who suffer most when inflation is high or increasing at the rate that it is are people that are on fixed incomes, such mm-hmm. as the elderly or lower income. If you mm-hmm. fit into that category, then yeah, inflation really hits you hard. Most of us are not elderly and on fixed and some are, I know that there are people that are on fixed incomes. Most of us are not. So the government tries to control inflation and essentially they try to drive the prices down or stop them from increasing by making it more expensive to borrow money, which is why interest rates go up on mortgages and loans. Mm -hmm. Therefore people borrow less money, which drives demand and therefore the pricing goes down. Okay. So that's, that's the like, big picture of what the government tries to do. So that means that 
fewer houses will get purchased and possibly fewer vehicles because money is now more expensive to borrow. I don't know anyone who's taking out loans for their the photographer to pay their photographer. <laughs> I don't, I mean, I'm not familiar with that model. So <laughs> I don't know that that exists, which means the interest rates going up really don't affect the photography sector. Now, okay, just a minute. Let me say this. You can beat inflation by making more money and raising your prices. That's what everybody is doing. That's what's happening in the market. And some people will say, I don't want to be part of the problem. Um, well, it's not a problem. It's just the economy and it's just the way that it goes. Mm -hmm. So it it is true that things were more expensive, but then money becomes more expensive and then prices go down. And this has been happening for, you know, a long, long time. So I don't think it's as, okay, I'm being, I'm choosing my words carefully because I know it impacts people, but I don't think it's as big of a deal on the photography industry as some might think. Mm -hmm. Well, I like to look at it as, you know, no matter what's going on, like the, you know, financial meltdown of 08 or, you know, whatever the latest inflation of 2022, are there still people spending money on vacations? Are there still people spending money at nice dinners? Are there still people going to nice hotels? Are there still people buying Hermes bags? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes to all of those things. Yes. So therefore, there are people that still have disposable income. This was the same thing during COVID. I mean, we were so worried about that. And yeah, there was a time where we actually couldn't do anything because of lockdowns and we didn't know what was going on and you couldn't actually be with people. But then- once the economy started to open up again, so many people had so much more disposable income because some of the things they were planning on spending and all, they couldn't do. There it is. And, That's yeah. exactly right. So they're actually, it, <laughs> believe it or not, it actually benefits us. So I'm going to get into that in a second because there's a really interesting trend around this. Mm -hmm. But I want to talk also about a recession. Yep. So currently we're experiencing very high inflation and there is talk of we're in a recession or a recession is coming. And the truth is the definition of a recession is a significant widespread prolonged downturn in economic activity. And it is defined by two consecutive quarters of decline in a country's gross domestic product. The GDP mm -hmm. has to go down for two quarters in a row for us to say we are officially in a recession. Therefore, any news outlet or any person that you hear or see right now saying we're in a recession is lying because there's no way that they know that. Those numbers are actually not reported accurately until a year later. Recessions are never known in the present. They're That's only a great defined in the point past. Because the average recession time, I was listening to someone chat about this the other day um, in the financial sector. The average length of a recession is a year. 11 um, months. Yes. yes. <laughs> and by the time that it is announced, it's basically done. Correct. So by the time it's an official recession, it's pretty much over. Correct. And even, I think it was 08 that was the worst and the longest, and that was 18 yes. months. Yes. Correct. You are yeah. right. Mm -hmm. So most recessions on average last less than a year and they are defined after the event. So right. if so, stop listening to the news, okay? They do not know if we are in a recession and they will not know until a year from now. In fact, the financial advisors that I follow are actually predicting that the recession will be in late 23, if not early 24, like that it is not happening now because the GDP has not gone down to consecutive quarters. Did you know that there was a recession in 2020? It lasted oh, right. four months. Yeah. Four months. So nobody... Nobody knew that. Most people don't know that, that that happened. So why would you let a recession ruffle your feathers? Right. You well, that's you just taking your power away from you being able to do anything about it. Right. Exactly. And listen, there is a storm coming. You know, there's always an economic storm on the horizon, but they come, they go, they don't last long. Mm -hmm. So don't get... Okay, I understand a lot of people are getting caught up in inflation. Prices are high. But do not get caught up in this whole idea of a recession because it has not happened yet. It could happen. It may happen. But I don't know. How often do you sit around looking at the GDP? 
Every day. Yeah. No, no, no. I <laughs> really don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never. No, but you're not paying attention to the GDP to see if it's going down two consecutive quarters yeah. in a row. So, I mean, you can like release the reins on this whole idea of a recession. But what's even more interesting about this is what I wanted to talk about specifically today is something called the lipstick effect. Have you heard of this? I have not. Oh. <gasps> Okay. The lipstick effect is when consumers still spend money on small indulgences during recessions, economic downturns, or when they personally have little cash. They do not have enough to spend on big ticket luxury items. However, many still find the cash to purchase small luxury items such as premium lipstick. And for this reason, companies that benefit from the lipstick effect tend to be resilient during economic downturns. And guess what category photography falls into? This. Really? This Even sm- if it's a thousand, two thousand dollars. Yes. So I was I was talking to a friend of ours. Because it's a lot more than a ten dollar lipstick. I don't even yeah. know what lipsticks cost. No, well let me tell you about it. lipstick. <laughs> um, I'll come back to that. I was talking to a mutual friend of ours recently and she said, So you are you suggesting that, you know, we just sell lower packages? And right. I said, No, 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 no. I am suggesting that we are immune to economic down turns in their entirety. I don't care if you're charging $150 or you have $5,000 sessions. I think we're immune to it because we fall in this category of luxury items. So this coin was termed by Leonard Lau... Oh, let me say this right. Estee Lauder. Leonard huh. Lauder. <laughs> it's a bit of a tongue twister. He coined this term after 9-11. So 9-11 happened... Uh, like the economy right. just went in the tanks. Everybody was in fear, but people were still buying lipstick, luxury lipstick. So luxury lipstick tends to be in the thirty to forty dollar range for a tube. Where mm-hmm. if That's you right go there to- with an Hermes bag for me, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. If you <laughs> go to say Target and you buy, um, you know, CoverGirl, Maybelline, right. L'Oreal, these lipsticks are around ten dollars. So. Okay. That's a drugstore price on a lipstick versus a luxury lipstick. So I actually own a few luxury lipsticks, which is so funny for me because usually I'm like, I'm not spending that money. But people will do that because they want to feel in control and they want to feel like they have some agency. They can still spend their money. They can still do things, even if they can't take the vacation by the car or the house. They will Mm. still, not only will they still spend money on these other items, but they will seek them out more because of what you said a few moments ago, which is they're not spending them. They can't get the house this year because they can't Mm -hmm. borrow money at 9% interest or, you know, wherever it's headed. So, but they will spend money on other items because they want to feel normal. And we fall into that category. That means affordable, I'm using air quotes here, affordable luxuries like photography actually rise in economic downturns. What? What? Mic drop. It's true. (laughs) It's true. I I had a thought too, along with those interest rates and the inflation bit, you know, yeah, it's more expensive to buy a house. It's more expensive to buy a car, but most of us aren't buying a house right now. A lot of people, a lot of our target market already either has a house or they're, you know, it's really affecting mostly the people that need to make those decisions, those purchases over the next couple of years. And, you know, there's maybe a lot of clients out there that refinanced a couple of years ago, a year and a half ago, and they're sitting on two and a half percent interest. And they're like, with all of this extra income, I'm going to take some pictures of my dog. <laughs> exactly. I'm going to get a dog, a new dog or a puppy, <laughs> or I'm going to get training or I'm going to get photos. The money is there. So what I am suggesting is that you shouldn't worry about whether or not people are going to spend money, or at least you shouldn't be blaming it, <laughs> any of it on the economy. <laughs> mm-hmm. That is not an excuse that I am willing to entertain. Yeah, and what good does it do to blame it on the economy? All that does is it lets you off the hook for having to do anything about it because it's something you can't control. Exactly. So- always going to be things we can't control. There's always going to be market forces. There's always going to be things shifting what our customers want, shifting the business. 
And we can either go along with that and ask ourselves, okay, what do I need to do in my business to get in front of the right people? What do I need to offer? Or we can just say, ah, uh, the economy is crap. <laughs> exactly. Well, can't do, can't control it. Can't do anything about it. So my hands are tied, Nicole. What do you want me yeah. to do? Yeah. yeah. Might well, as well yeah. Yeah. It's just not an excuse I'm going to listen to. I'm working on this training for Elevate around something I'm calling the belief triad. And one of the beliefs that you must have is that people are able and willing to spend money with you. You must believe that. So I was working with someone yesterday on a lifeline and she said, well, I gave her the pricing, but I think I just, you know, I think it's I might be too expensive. It might be expensive. And I said, you are no longer permitted to use that word around me mm -hmm. because what you view as expensive may not be the same as me and certainly isn't the same for your client. So I want you to write this down. People are able and willing to spend money with me because no matter what the economy, that's the truth. And if, if everybody's like, oh, Heather, but this is different or how do you know? Okay, I have proof. I have proof. I do not teach from merely my theories. Okay, sometimes I do. <laughs> sometimes I do. <laughs> but but this, this is time. not one of those This cases. is not one of those times. I have proof because of 2008 and 2009. The recession, the housing market crash, which was really bad, the longest recession that we've seen. I did not know it was a thing or that it was happening. I didn't have any idea what was going People on. People were still getting married? They were still getting married and it was, it was like the busiest, it was the peak of my business. I was shooting 30 weddings a year. I was busier than I had ever been. Money was rolling in. I had no clue what was happening, mostly because I was too busy to pay attention and social media wasn't like it is now. I mean, it was, that was certainly the birth of Facebook around that time. It hit a tipping right. point, but I, w I certainly wasn't watching the news. I mean, most people don't, but they get their news from social media. If you didn't know it was happening, would it affect you? Right. I mean, I don't know. You might notice that prices are, have gone up, but if you just didn't pay attention, which is what happened to me, I was too busy working. <laughs> I was working and I was earning money. And it was actually that year I bought my mom a car for a birthday present. Okay. It was, it was used and not very expensive, but I was able to write a check to buy her a car. And I had no clue that there was some major economic downturn that we were living through. And the truth is I didn't even really know much about it till after, but that, that is, that would be the case now. Meaning again, it's not defined until a year later. So right. you, you may suspect, or all of the analysts may suspect we're in a recession because of the GDP, but they, they actually cannot say that with any integrity until a year after. So I'm just not going to listen to it. <laughs> so therefore, <laughs> it does not exist yet. Um, yeah, no. And I think, you know, you guys, I want you to hear the intent of what we're saying here. And that is... Like I just said, like the only thing you can control is how you're going to react to certain situations, how you're going to show up, what you're going to do, what you're going to choose to believe and what you're going to choose to to take action on. And so long as there are like, that's my litmus test when I need to like reconvince myself that people will pay my prices or, you know, because it still happens to me, Heather, I've been in this business for 12 years and every once in a while it's like, why why do I think I can charge these rates for my photography? <laughs> like like it still happens to me. Yes. And and I would say, I mean, my rates aren't the highest. They're they're good boutique. My average is thirty two hundred dollars. So it's like it's a good business, but I'm certainly not the most expensive. And I still just like, well, God, I should probably lower those. <laughs> Like, no, 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 I should not lower them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You just hit yourself on your own wrist. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, but because it it's never the us. price. It's never right. the price. Even, even when everything is fine and you're not worried about the economy, it is never, never the price. And here's how I know that if you lowered the price and offered it to the same people, those same people still would not buy. Right. It's right. not about the price. Yeah. And so, yeah, my litmus test for like trying to to accept that, oh yeah, no, it's fine. Is so long as there are luxury car sales, so long <laughs> as there are luxury restaurants, luxury hotels, people are still doing that. Like the only reason 
that I think we as photographers should be concerned about the viability of our business is if we get to a point where the majority of the country does not have their basic needs met. Right. Okay. If that happens, we've got a bigger problem. There's a lot of big, Mm -hmm. big stuff going on that this is like, you're not even worried about your business anymore because you are also worried for survival. Yes. So yes, it's different. Unless that happens, (laughs) there are clients out there that still want your services. There are clients out there that are happy to pay for your services. And there are clients out there that by paying full price for your services will actually value their experience more than if you gave it to them for free. Oh, for sure. Oh, absolutely. Because when you don't pay for something, you don't value it. Mm -hmm. I would argue that for photographers, they should look at this as a unique opportunity because of the lipstick effect phenomenon. That a downturn in the economy is actually good for us. It's not It's not Mm -hmm. a scary thing. It's not a bad thing. It's not going to take out our business or our industry. We don't have to worry about raising our prices or lowering our prices or anything around that. I think there's a unique opportunity here for people who can, who believe this. Okay. There's going to be some people that just, you know, I don't know, you know, kind of naysayers that are like, I don't, I don't think that's really a thing. Okay. Look, you can look it up. Lipstick effect. You can. You can dive into it if you want to get your degree in micro or macroeconomics, you know, let me know how that goes. But if you just choose to look at this as something that can help you and doesn't hurt you, I promise you that thought will serve you better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. hundred percent. Woo. Threw down the hammer. Yeah, I'm not, I'm just... I'm just there's so, no sugarcoating around no, here there's, anymore. I'm so tired of the excuses. <laughs> and this this one, this the inflation and the recession looming became such a convenient excuse for people to not mm-hmm. do things. And it just makes me it my eyes roll back in my head so far. I'm surprised they don't just like pop out. I don't believe that it's an issue. It, even if it were, I still don't believe it's an issue, which means it wouldn't be for me because the the only thing that's going to bother you are the things that you believe are true. So if Mm -hmm. you don't believe this is a problem, it is not a problem. But if you do, it's going to be. And then it's going to become the self-fulfilling prophecy. And you're going to try to tell me, well, you don't understand my market. You don't understand my area. Um, I guess I don't. Because I think if you could put me in podunk anywhere, I could make a business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, there are numerous photographers. We've had quite a few on the podcast that live in Teeny, tiny, tiny, little towns. Yeah. Tracy Munson without, is one of them. Comes Without to red lights. Mm-hmm. She doesn't have a red light. Yep. And um, yeah. And able to make a full-time business out of it. Right. So yeah, it, it's the quality of your life is determined by the quality of questions asked. Right? Tony Robbins. Yes. Says that. Yes. So instead of asking ourselves or just telling ourselves how it is, what if we just change it to what can I do today to attract more people into my business? Where do I find the people that are not affected by whatever's going on? Where do I find the people that have discretionary income mm-hmm. that, you know, value what they do? How do I talk to these people? How do I offer make offers to these people? And what were your three steps again? Because oh, this is all you need to do in your business. Number Guys. one is to meet people. Okay, Number get two, get a pen. Is- get a pen. <laughs> write this down. Yeah, meet this is people. It, okay, I know Number it two. seems basic, but <laughs> number two is to tell them that you're a photographer. Oh, okay. Tell them you are a photographer, not any photographer. Tell them you photograph dogs, correct, or horses. Tell them or what cats, you do. You are whatever. a photographer. Yep. And number three, you make them an offer. What's that? What? What does that look like, Heather? Because do I? <laughs> sit down and say, Hey, um, can I photograph your dog for exactly $1,347? Like what does the making an offer? Because I know people are going to get stuck on that one and be like, yeah, fine. I'll meet people. I'll tell them what I do, but how the heck do I make them an offer? You just say, I want to photograph your pet and here's what I charge. Here are my prices. Here's where I start. Here's what the average people spend. I don't know. People want to overthink this to uh-huh. death and they get so caught up in the how how do I do that? How do I meet uh-huh. people? How do I... No, you just <laughs> stop. You meet people, tell them you're a pet photographer, make them an offer. That offer could be standing in line at the grocery store and, 
and somebody has their dog with them and you say, that's a cute dog. I photograph dogs. Here's my card. Give me a call because I'd like to photograph your dog and we can talk about packages and stuff or whatever. It's just like offering the fact uh-huh. that your services are available. People miss this. And so what they'll do is maybe they'll meet people. If we're lucky, they'll tell them they're a photographer, but they never get to the point where they make an offer. So they post things or they go to these networking events, meet, 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 meet all these people. And they're like, it's not working. It's not working. Nothing is working. But did you, did you actually try to get them to book you by saying, you need to book me for a session. Here are my prices or whatever that looks like. Just, just <laughs> there, everybody's going to want to overthink this. It can't mm-hmm. be that simple. Yeah, it actually is. I sell my services on the street to people all the time. I am uh, any doctor's appointment, anybody I'm meeting, I'm telling them what it is I do, how I can help them. And then I tell them, call me. It's true. I've seen this in action. (laughs) Constant. It's constant. (laughs) I was at a doctor's appointment yesterday and I was pitching her. I was pitching her on my coaching services. And she's, after we were talking, she's like, oh my gosh, I love you. Can I hire you? And I said, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Give me a call. (laughs) Here's my information. Yeah. Just make them an offer. Make everybody an offer. What's the worst that can happen? They say no. Okay. Well, you're no worse off than you were five minutes ago. Meet people, tell them you're a pet photographer, make them an offer. Make sure you're hitting all three of those steps. And I promise you, you will get clients and you won't worry about your marketing. Did you ever worry about your marketing? In what way? Just like worry you, about you like- were always getting clients. Like I never, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I was with you when you started your business and I don't remember you ever saying like, oh my gosh, I need to find clients. You just always had clients. Yeah. I mean, certainly there were times of year, you know, first quarter in Pittsburgh that not a lot going on. Hold on one second. Cammie's losing her mind. Stand by. Okay. I'm back. Did you know that FedEx actually sends murderers from their car to come kill the people <laughs> and dog owners. That's what Cammie wanted to let me know. Oh, she's so thoughtful. She protects your home. <laughs> yes. Okay. Anyway, you were saying like, yeah. no, you oh, had clients. Yeah. You weren't worried about getting clients. Right. It was definitely, there's definitely seasonal ebbs and flows, but um, I also had some different marketing plans in place and I knew that they would come. And even if I looked at my calendar, I'm like, oh, you know, maybe June's looking a little light. Like, I knew that it would come and I knew that I was in control of if that happened or not. And I could send out an email. I can make some offers. I could, you know, I, I could choose to do something about that and, and make it change. Did the outcome always hit my goals? No, no. Did sometimes it exceed it? Yes. So it's all just, it ebbs and flows, but you have to do something. The one other point I wanted to make too about making that offer And I think one of the reasons people maybe don't make the offer is because they subconsciously maybe don't feel that it has the value. (laughs) But the longer you're in the business, the more you realize how much value this actually brings to the table. Because I have had three emails in the past three months of the importance of what. I've done from sessions I photographed seven, eight years ago. Wow. That Mm -hmm. they just out of the blue send me a note of how much they value what they're doing because maybe the dog isn't with them anymore. In one case, one of the one of the people passed away. It's what we do has so much value. So if you have trouble feeling like, oh, I don't know, is it worth it? Well, yes. 100% yes. And it just might take some time till you get the personal, what's the word I'm looking for? The personal reinforcement of of somebody actually telling you how your work, how valuable it was for them. That takes usually a couple years for that full value to be realized because, you know, the animals or God forbid people have passed on. But if you're, you haven't reached that point yet, like take these stories and know that even though the services you're providing now are going to be that for someone else in the future. Actually, you're so smart. You are touching on something that I'm teaching in the belief triad training, which is belief in your product or service. If you Mm -hmm. don't believe in your product or or service, it's going to be very difficult to sell it. 
but you believe in what you're offering so strongly that it's not difficult for you to make an offer. Mm -hmm. So that belief has to be there. So that's one thing. We'll come back to that because after I deliver this training in Elevate, we can talk about, you know, we can talk about that more because you're, yeah. you're, you're jumping ahead into my training because you're smart. Okay. I, I do also want to say that yesterday on the Elevate Strategy call, uh, this did come up about, you said something about January in Pittsburgh, you know, and mm -hmm. it's difficult to photograph. And there's all You get this... to photograph in the snow though, but I love. So right, anyway, right. Go ahead. Yeah. So there's it's not some, the same as me. I hear photographers this time of year saying, oh, Heather, winter is coming. Winter is coming. I have to be prepared. I have to, you know, do all. And I'm like, uh, what are you, a farmer? I, no, winter is coming. Okay, you can still have sessions, you can still plan things, you can still book clients. So the thing is, you know, I understand that there are times of the year that are less conducive to shooting, like mm -hmm. August in Florida, or I don't I don't photograph July and August here. It's just yeah, too it's hot. too hot, too hot. Mm -hmm. Or February in Pittsburgh. So I get that there are seasons, but this doom and gloom around oh winter. I'm like, no. You're not a farmer. You can still do things in the winter and you can find ways to, you know, you can run like um, specials or sales on things where people are booking you in the winter, even if you're not shooting in those months mm -hmm. or in the summer. Mm -hmm. You know, there are just, it's, there's just always, to, in my there's mind, always there's always a way. Yeah. yeah. There's always you a way. You can do home yeah. sessions. You can do mini sessions. You can market now for spring and pre-book stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. There's always a way yeah. to keep things thriving in your business, even when you're not shooting. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to yeah. get derailed because I have about five different topics I want to talk to you about on the podcast. So <laughs> we'll come back to yeah. many of these. <laughs> well, yes. I mean, you guys know that you expect Heather on here at least once a month. And if if we miss a month or two, I hear about it. I hear about it. I love that. No. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> anyway, this has been a great conversation. Thanks guys for joining us on this. Uh, and I hope that brought a little bit of ease, any anxiety that was maybe out there floating around because it does. And if you watch the news all the time, then the media's job is to make things scary. So we keep watching, <laughs> you know, so I'm not saying to be misinformed and not even like watch and who cares what's happening in the world. You yeah, know, we should be informed. We should be able to make decisions for our financial future and be safe and all that kind of stuff. But you are in control of how you react to all of this, all of this input. So, and also you need to know, I think your limits on the input, like certain people, you know, on social media. And there are certain people that I have unfollowed on social media because I knew the, what all the things they posted that were so negative. And so like it, it was not good for me. I did not need to be exposed to that on a daily basis. I don't need to change it. I just need to choose how I react to it. And my way to react to what's it just, I just don't want to be a part of it. I don't, I don't need to see that. So if you are, you know, watching the news every day and you're really, really can like, can you dial it back a little bit where you, <laughs> yes. you check on a couple headlines here and there, but you're not glued in. I know I was for during like the whole COVID first couple months because partly because I like, love viruses not in that. Like, I just I just <laughs> think do. they're fascinating yes. I'm, I'm just I'm a nerd I'm a science nerd and so I was just like mesmerized by it but after like you know after that two weeks that the right. kids were supposed to be out of school and they weren't back in school it's like okay enough enough <laughs> I can put that pandemic back in its box now please. enough <laughs> yeah you know I mean some people are think that you need to be informed you know and I, I disagree with that I disagree I am blissfully unaware blissfully ignorant I'll, I I know what I need to know because if something were catastrophic uh, I'd figure it out so I just I am really careful about my intakes and my inputs mm -hmm. because it's not helping me. It's not serving you to hear those things or buy into that fear. Even if you say in your brain, oh, that's not, that's not true, or it's not going to be that bad or whatever. Uh, too late. It already impacted your brain. Mm -hmm. So I'm out. I just don't, don't expose yourself to it or proceed with caution and then pay the price. I don't know what to tell you. Yep. Yep. But yeah, I think the biggest takeaway here though, is to remember that you are in control of your outcome. And um, we have our three steps. 
talk to people, tell them what you do, make them an offer. And, you know, just know as long as there's people buying a nice purse or a nice dinner or a nice car, there are plenty of people that will also invest in photography. That's right. And, um, you know, go get your lipstick. I'm not going to get the lipstick. Like is, could, could mine be like the, the ice cream effect or something? Like as long as I'm still going out and getting ice cream, I suppose every once in a while, like all is good in the world. Is there something that you spend money on that? Well, your horses, that's not a good example because that, that stuff really is pretty expensive, but is there, it's, it's, it's insane. And sometimes I question my sanity for having two of them. What is a small luxury purchase for you? Like sub $100? Um, gosh, I like food. Yeah. Food, Good food. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Or a massage. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay. So you're still kind. going to do those things because you can, mm-hmm. and people are still going to hire photographers because they can, and it's yep. going to be fine. I promise you. Yep. Yep. People still love their dogs and they're still getting more. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody. It was good to see you. We will uh, see you next week for yet another podcast episode. Um, In the meantime, reach out to Heather at Flourish. What's your Instagram? Flourish.academy or just Flourish Academy? If you search Flourish Academy, you'll find it. Okay, there you go. Yeah, perfect. I'm in a Cole Bagley official. Let us know what you guys took away from this. Also, let us know if you have tried the three steps and what you are doing to take control of your business and continue to move it forward no matter what the economic outlook. All right. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.